All right, so check this out. This is this is a tweet I, I sent to this FBI tweet. Check this out. It says, if you dream of being an FBI special agent, the deadline to apply is tonight. <laughs> okay, so I tweeted them. Uh, I can't fill out the application. I'm too busy exposing police corruption. Okay, and it looks like they replied. <laughs> the big dummies. <laughs> this is their reply. I don't really mean it when I say the big dummies. I just talk that way. Hey, where's my reply? They just replied. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. That was Mark Bond that replied. All right, forgive me. Be part of the solution. I am being part of the solution. I'm exposing police criminality. <laughs> now... Fellow American citizens, fellow San Diegoans, fellow the Hoyans, fellow Californians. Hold it. <laughs> I know you're probably thinking this woman would be crazy. All right, hold on, y'all. Hang on. I got to put on my shirt. This is just going to be a tidbit file. <laughs> As you can tell right now, I'm sure by now, I'm sure that you can tell that this is a comedy video, uh, except for the tweets. <coughs> My name is Leslie Williams. And what I do on rare occasions... Hold on. What I do on rare occasions is that I make comedy videos in order to be able to keep my spirits up. I'm a victim, target, and activist concerning the criminal expeditions of what is known as gang stalking. Flat out in your face. <laughs> Alright, so check it out. The reason why I'm living in a tent is because I am a victim of gang stalking and the police cor corruption that is attached to it. And <coughs> I will never stop exposing it. Excuse me, Bert. Now, as a result of me being a victim, target, and activist, excuse me, of this specific type of aforementioned criminality. It is my intention to expose every detail of not only what is happening to me, okay, I'm going to get serious for a moment, but to also expose the expeditions of gang stalking. Hold on. I've been tweeting ever since, uh, tweeting on Twitter ever since I woke up. Hold on. It's my clear intention to, uh, again, like I've already forementioned, uh, in all seriousness, it's my intention to expose these criminalities in order to be able to educate the public uh, concerning what gang stalking is and these, the not only the crimes but also the subcrimes, uh, so they can research these criminalities in order to be able to educate themselves. As a result, they become informed and they can then make. Uh, conscious deliberations pertaining to how to protect themselves, their loved ones, and their property. I do what I do for safety's sake, including my own. <laughs> but, uh, oh, hey, hey, listen, <clears throat> I definitely think it's apropos. The following statement is being made from my heart, okay? Uh, I'm not saying that it's a fact, okay? And I'm not trying to shove the crimes that have happened to me in the spotlight and attach it to or piggyback on what's going on in, in uh, Ferguson, Missouri. But what I want to state needs to be said. Okay? I was assaulted on an MTS bus on October 10th, 2011. That's right. And then MTS, which is a public transportation service, sent me an altered video of that assault. The individual who assaulted me hadn't been engaged in gang stalking of me on that same bus route on prior dates and on the morning of the assault. They altered the video. And this and the police report that was made, okay, which I now have a copy of, pertaining to that assault is filled with lies and facts are omitted. The San Diego Police Department, the San Diego DA's office, okay, were notified by me physically, okay, by email and by certified mail. 
Okay, pertaining to the fact that MTS sent me an altered video of me being assaulted. And if you go to YouTube and type in learning disabled woman brutally assaulted on an MTS bus, you'll literally be able to see the fact that the video is altered. And, but, go into the description of that YouTube video and research everything that is in it slowly and meticulously with a mature investigative posture. You'll literally witness that I, I, I literally predicted that brutal assault 11 days before it occurred. I have now been assaulted four times as a result of whistleblowing concerning me being a gang stalking target and also how it's connected to the San Diego Police Department's at least gross negligence of duty concerning it. Now. The last assault that took place towards me occurred at this very spot on July 9th, 2014, and that assault was predicted two and a half days before it occurred in a video file. And I still have that video file on the video card pertaining to the video prediction that was made on July 6th, 2014. I literally made a video right outside of this tent on July 6th, 2014 that there's a great likelihood that I'm going to be assaulted or, or other events might occur at this area. And then two and a half days later, I'm brutally assaulted at the very spot the video prediction was made at, and the, and the assault was caught on video. I still had that video file on the memory card, okay, of the actual assault. Video files on memory card, video memory cards show time stamps and time dates. Two assaults that, of, of four, two assaults now, of the four, me, me exposing them to you pertaining to how they were uh, predicted before they occurred. All four assaults were predicted. Two in an email file, all four in audio files, one in a video file, okay, and one in a di and the and the third one, which is one of the four, predicted eight and a half hours before it occurred in a digital running recording tape recorder, 90 seconds before it occurred, and 30 seconds before it occurred. My name is Leslie Williams, and I am in San Diego, California. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because four to five days after all this uh, craziness. Okay, started in Ferguson, uh, Ferg uh, I'm sorry, in Ferguson, in Missouri, and when I mean by craziness, I mean the fact that a unarmed man was gunned down dead like a dog in the street, okay, by a police officer, okay, whose mentality, uh, whose mentality, uh, I'm not even going to go there, I mean, come on, yelling to a young man to get the F off the street, why is a police officer swearing, for one, that's against the law. To be swearing in public is against the law. It's literally a penal code. So get the F off the street should tell you right there that this guy was not acting with professional conduct. Backtracking for a second. Rewinding. If they'll send me an altered video of me being assaulted and using a black man to do it so they could portray the assault as being nothing but a result from a what? Racial profiling, a black thug. You know, Coplock posted that video when it happened. Uh, <clears throat> once they became aware of it in 2012, and guess who got online and posted comments below the video on Coplock's webpage? Individuals that were connected to the gang stalking. Trolls. And they got online and tried to portray the assault happening just because of a thug, which is what they wanted to portray it. That's why they used a black, in a black individual. Understand this and be clear. If you don't think that police departments do not know about racial profiling, well, they do it. So do you honestly think that they do not do not have the ability to, any police department would not, who would do something like this, would not say, okay, well, we want to assault, we want to assault a whistleblower, but we've got to make it appear that it's just a, an assault. Okay? So how would they do that? Well, they pick a white woman and a black man. A black thug. I'm not saying he was a black thug at all. I'm trying to prove to you that the mentality of setting this assault up was done intentionally to make it appear that <coughs> in people who have stereotype, uh, typical thinking, that he was just a black thug. No, they used him. Why would MTS send me an altered video of me being assaulted? If MTS was not involved in it, and why would the San Diego police alter the police report concerning it and omit facts about it? I'm in San Diego, California, and my name is Leslie Williams. That's right. Go to Google and YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Exposes How MTS Assault Video is Altered. Now, I've been assaulted four times, and the last assault just occurred not even a month and four days ago at this very spot. The third assault occurred right across the street from this spot because they're now picking places where there's no witnesses. 
and literally even attempting to grab my video camera as these people are approaching me to assault me and assaulting me so the, so they can walk away with the evidence. I'm in San Diego, California, and my name is Leslie Williams. I'm making this video to inform to expose the truth. So, you realizing by researching all the descriptions in this video, you realizing in your mind, a professor over at USD by the name of Eric Pearson, he saw that, uh, he saw uh, still framed pictures of the assault video, okay, from a computer terminal online. He is a professor in communications that specializes in videos and images. He saw it and posted that video clip of the still framed video of the MTS assault video. He saw it online and posted it to a website called First Post. I got the evidence to prove he was the one who did it, and then when I seen that he was the one that did it, I researched what he is a professor in communications that specializes in videos and images. The San Diego Police Department was told about that as well. Why wouldn't they investigate the fact that MTS sent me an altered video? Why won't the DA? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Leslie Williams. If you don't think for one minute, for one minute, that any police department that is involved in criminality will not alter a video to make it appear that, some, that something is something else think again okay and I even made a video about this back in 2012 long before okay all this stuff you know occurred in, in uh, Missouri that I didn't want anybody to view the individual who was black that assaulted me okay I, I made a video stating that I don't want this to turn out to be a racist issue because I know I knew that it wasn't I knew why they used him fellow American citizens I'm not trying to cause trouble at all and I want to make this statement. There are good San Diego police officers on the force. There's got to be. There's thousands. There's, there's uh, I think, something like 1,300. Okay? So you're going to tell me that 1,300 police officers are all corrupt and bad? Of course not. That's crazy. That's profiling the police. It's not my job to do something like that. My job, okay, is to expose what's happening to me so the American public can see what's not only just happening to me, but so they can see what's really factually happening to organized stalking, gang stalking targets. We are victims of some of the most heinous, horrific criminalities that your mind can conceive and cannot. And we need justice. We're human beings just like you. Now, again, I want to reiterate this because it needs to be said. I am sure, I feel it, I sense it, that there are good San Diego police officers on the force. So please do not think that just because I'm exposing and that I'm a whistleblower concerning the San Diego Police Department that all these police officers are bad. Of course not. That's ludicrous and it's stereotyping them. I have to be spiritually responsible for the things that I say. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a person. I'm just getting the word out about what's happening to me. I do appreciate you listening. Michael Brown, rest in peace, brother. And there's, um, oh, I sincerely forgot their names. Um, there's been two to three other uh, unarmed black individuals that have been murdered, okay, uh, by police in the last week. Now, black uh, victims of uh, pr police misconduct whether they're, it doesn't matter if they're just black, if they're black, even though there seems to be an undeniable, uh, 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 ratio pertaining to how often it's happened to black, happening to black people in reference to how often it's happening to whites or Mexicans. So we need to, as people, start listening to our black community because they are part of the American community. Under, I mean, think about this. Come on, this, you know, in closing, let me just, let me just make this statement in closing, okay? Why do you think black people, black folks, American citizens, okay, why do you think that they have been complaining and yelling and screaming and sharing their pain for decades? Why? Because of things that aren't happening to them? If we maybe then just maybe for one minute Honestly and sincerely, really, I know I'm just a person talking, but if we really just took a, a moment to sit back and, thought, and, and say to ourselves, okay, I want to listen to what they really got to say. I want to really listen to what they, what, what they feel. Then maybe we can understand where they're really, really, really coming from. And then maybe things could change. This shit's got to stop someday. You know what I'm saying? It's got to stop.
okay? All right, so, fellow American, I, I'm serious about that. I saw a video picture the other day on my Twitter, I discovered Twitter, of this black woman. She was so precious. Her, it, it looked, I don't know if it was her son or not, but he was holding her arms up from behind her so they could hold up the sign, don't shoot. I think that's what it said, don't shoot. I looked at her and I saw my mother, you know? <clears throat> She was just a woman hurting to be heard. And we gotta listen, man. We gotta listen. All right, I gotta go. My name is Elsie Williams, and I am in San Diego, San Diego, California. And what I'm gonna do right now is close this video with a comical posture in order to put a smile on that sweet, precious face. Because everything... I want, I want you to be able to leave from watching this video with a smile, okay? My name is Leslie Williams, it really, really is. I'm a human being, sharing my life with you. Okay, kudos to everybody, and check it out. I have, I have discovered Twitter, even though my phone is hacked and my Twitter account is hacked, along with my email files, or my email accounts, my blog accounts, and my YouTube accounts. But anyways, I have now discovered Twitter, so I am now a Twitter tweeter. <laughs> I gotta get... I gotta go. Rest in peace, Michael Brown. Rest in peace, all victims of injustice around the world. Stay strong. Have a good day.